midway upon the road of our life, I found myself within a dark wood, for the right way had been missed. Ah, how hard a thing it is to tell what this wild and rough and dense wood was, which in thought renews the fear. So bitter is it that death is little more, but in order to treat of the good that there I found, I will tell of the other things that I have seen there. I cannot well recount how I entered it. So full was I of slumber at that point where I abandoned the true way. But after I had arrived at the foot of a hill where that valley ended which had pierced my heart with fear, I looked on high and saw its shoulders clothed already with the rays of the planet that leadeth men aright along every path. Then was the fear a little quieted which in the lake of my heart had lasted through the night that I passed so piteously, and even as one who with spent breath issued out of the sea upon the shore, turns to the perilous water and gazes, so did my soul, which still was flying turn back to look again upon the pass which never had a living person left. After I had rested a little, my weary body, I took my way again along the desert slope, so that the firm foot was always the lower. And ho, oh, almost at the beginning of the steep, a she-leopard, light and very nimble, which was covered with a spotted coat, and she did not move from before my face, nay, rather, hindered so my road, that to return I oftentimes had turned. The time was at the beginning of the morning, and the sun was mounted upward with those stars that were with him when love divine first set in motion those beautiful things so that the hour of the time and the sweet season were occasion of good hope to me concerning that wild beast with the dappled skin. But not so that the sight which appeared to me of a lion did not give me fear. He seemed to be coming against me, with head high and with ravening hunger, so that it seemed that the air was affrighted at him. And a she-wolf, who with all cravens seemed laden in her meagerness, and already had made many folk to live forlorn. She caused me 
so much heaviness, with fear that came from sight of her, that I lost hope of the height, and such as he who gaineth willingly, and the time arrives that makes him lose, who in all his thoughts weeps and is sad. Such made me the beast without repose that, coming on against me, little by little, was pushing me back thither where the sun is silent. While I was falling back to the low place, before mine eyes appeared one who through long silence seemed hoarse. When I saw him in the great desert, have pity on me, I cried to him. Whatso thou art, or shade or real man, he answered me, Not man, man once I was, and my parents were Lombards, and Mantuans by country both. I was born sub Julio, though late, and I lived at Rome under the good Augustus in the time of the false and lying gods. Poet was I, and sang of that just son of Anchises, who came from Troy after proud Ilion had been burned. But thou, why returnest thou to so great annoy? Why dost thou not ascend the delectable mountain, which is the source and cause of every joy? Art thou then that Virgil, and that fount which poureth forth so large a stream of speech, replied I to him with bashful front. O honor and light of the other poem, I may the long seal avail me. And the great love which have made me search thy volume, thou art my master, and my author, thou alone, he from whom I took the fair style that hath done me honor. Behold the beast because of which I turned. Help me against her, famous sage, for she makes any veins and pulses tremble. Thee it behooves to hold another course, he replied, when he saw me weeping. If thou wishest to escape from this savage place, for this beast, because of which thou criest out, lets not any one pass along her way, but so hinders him that she kills him. And she has a nature so malign and evil that she never sates her greedy will, and after food is hungrier than before. Many are the animals with which she wives, and there shall be more yet till the hound shall come that will make her die of grief. He shall not feed on lands or goods, but wisdom and love and valor, and his birthplace shall be between Feltro and Feltro. 
of that humble Italy shall he be the salvation for which the virgin Camellia died. And Euryalus, Turnus, Nisus of their wounds. He shall hunt her through every town till he shall have set her back in hell. There whence envy first sent forth. Wherefore I think and deem it for thy best that thou shall follow me, and I will be thy guide, and will lead thee hence through the eternal place where thou shalt hear the despairing shrieks, shalt see the ancient spirits woeful who each proclaim the second death, and then thou shalt see those who are contented in the fire because they hope to come whenever it may be to the blessed folk to whom if thou wilt thereafter ascend them shall be a soul more worthier than I for that. With her I will leave thee at my departure, for that emperor who reigneth them above, because I was rebellious to his law, wills not that into his city any one should come through me. In all parts he governs, and them he reigns. There is his city and his lofty seat. O oh, happy he whom thereto he elects. And I to him, Poet, I beseech thee by that God whom thou didst not know, in order that I may escape this ill and worse that thou lead me thither whom thou now hast said, so that I may see the gate of St. Peter, and those whom thou makest so afflicted. Then I moved on, and he moved on, and I behind him kept. I chose this piece, the first canto of Dante's Inferno, because the idea of spirituality, of consciousness, of the eternal human soul, is something that stretches far beyond time and culture. A question that passes through all man's minds while on this earth, sharing the same universal fate of death. We live, if fortunate, Seventy to a hundred, to some even a hundred and twenty years here on this earth, chasing after so many futile longings and desires, yet internally we know that there is a universal and eternal desire that lies within all of our hearts. Some of us turn from it because we fear the thought. Some of us chase after it because
because it's the only thing that brings us satisfaction in life. And there we are left to our own devices and experiences to decide what our purpose is. This poem falls into this category, experiencing death and escaping from it through the grace of truth.